Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another watercolor project for you. Today I'm going to show you how to do this, this cute little spring door. I thought this would be a great way to make a card for someone who's moving into a new home. And I'm going to be using a lot of the new stamp sets that Art Impressions came out with this year. The cobblestones, the wood, the wall texture, as well as this door. So let's get started. First I'm going to be taking the door. Now I know it looks like the door's already stamped because it was. I don't know what happened to my footage of the beginning of this video. So I did ink up the door in some sepia and stamped it in the middle of my page. Now I'm using my paintbrush to just pull out the color from those lines. Now you'll notice that I'm pulling the color from this the door handle. I'm going around the door not the door handle. Yeah, the door handle. I'm going around it, not pulling the color into it because I want it to pop out. And I'll do that for the windows as well. So I'm just as we start all of our projects just pulling that color into the center of the door. Now I'm just taking my sepia pen and I'm just darkening in the keyhole and the handle for that door lock. Now I'm going to put some, I believe this is the steel blue. I'm going to put some steel blue even though you can't see that part of my, um, my palette. I put some steel blue down on my palette and I just picked it up, picked some color up with some water and I'm just lightly putting it next to the door because that is where the texture is going to be and I want to make sure because it's you're not going to be able to put the texture in after or the color in after easily like you could but it's not going to be easy so this way you put the color down first which is whatever color you want your walls to be and then you let that dry and then you stamp your texture over it so I'm just making sure I get a little bit above the door as well as on the sides. And this does not have to be perfect by any means because like I said, we're going to be stamping over it with the texture. And you don't want it to be perfect. It's a watercolor painting. It's not supposed to be perfect. So now that it's dry, I'm now going in and I'm going to add some details. So I learned this from Bonnie Krebs because she is the master. She is the creator of the watercolor stamps. So in one of her videos, I believe doing a door as well, she tells us how we can add curtains and stuff to these these windows. So I using my African violet, I just drew in the curtains I wanted and I'm just pulling that color out of the lines and into the middle of those curtains to give them a little more depth. I also drew in a couple of pleats where they would be, where they would be gathered. So now I'm taking my paintbrush and I'm pulling in some of the color into the actual window itself. You can do this with the African violet or you can do this with blue. So this is the brick wall texture and I'm using a brownish gray and I'm inking up just sporadic, not sporadic, but I'm not going to ink up the entire stamp. I'm just going to do parts of it because I want it to really look kind of sporadic. <laughs> That's the word of the day, sporadic. And then I'm going to ink it up again and I'm going to put it on the other side as well. Now I had a challenge with this stamp. It's one of those things that I think the more you use it, the more you're going to get used to stamping it and it's going to come out better and better every time. Practice, practice, practice. I've, I've stamped this several times and I'm still not totally great with it. I did look at, if you look at the stamp itself, it, it kind of gives an illusion of, I usually try to, what am I trying to say? 
I usually try to line up one side so I know if it's straight. And I was having a really hard time with the stamp because it's not really straight. So I made sure that I put it down on my mat and then I put it down onto the acrylic block straight. So when I went to stamp it, I just made sure my acrylic block was straight and not so much looking at how the image on the block was because it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. And I really didn't feel like pulling out my positioner, which is another way you could do, you could definitely do that. So now back to the painting, I'm pulling the color out from the bottom of these bricks and in some in between as well. Now on this side here, I felt like I, I felt like I used a little too much water. I loved how the side on the left hand side came out and I tried to do that again on the right hand side, but I think I just had a little too much water. So now I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to stop because anything, everything's fixable. So I'm just going to continue on. I'm going to put some foliage in there and it's going to be fine. No one, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. So now I'm inking up the, um, the cobblestone for the front. Now I did the same thing. I made sure that that top cobblestone was, was not level, but that that was lined up and that was straight. And then I knew when I, when I stamped it down that it would stamp in exactly where I wanted it. I inked this, this is the, um, I think it's like a pathway or it's rocks. I thought I'd use them for the, the front of this. I've also used it as a path and I inked it up with the sepia and the African violet together to give it that nice gray color. And now I'm pulling out the color from around the rocks, not in the middle of the rocks, although I did add a little bit of color on top of the rocks. And now I'm just softening the, that out from around it. But I really want those, the tops of those stones to remain white because that's what's going to make it pop. So I'm putting some sepia down with a little scribble of African violet so I can get some more color, like I, more of that grayish color. And I'm going to add just a little bit more on top of those, on top of the rocks between the rock and the ledge there and then in between. And I'm just gonna soften those out. Again, this is not gonna, I think I spent a little more time than I really needed to on this because what's gonna happen is we're gonna put in some grasses and that's gonna go in between some of the rocks along that that stoop, I guess call it, call it a stoop. And that's really going to bring that all together. Sometimes I like to walk my, my grass out to the right or left. And sometimes I like to jump it up and down to make it look a little, a little fuller. And I'm just adding it here and there. It really grounds, it really grounds those cobblestones. Then I'll take my brush, well, after I add all of the grass in, and I'm gonna take my brush, and this is where we pull the color out in a lot, in a straight line. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do it like we do our flowers. We pull up and out. And of course, the more you pull up, the more you pull up, the, the further that that's going to go. So you can have short grass or you can have long grass. It's really your choice. Sometimes if I, if it's not enough, I'll put some green on my palette and I'll add some more to it. Instead of using water, I'll use actual color. 
I'm just going to continue pulling out some of that, some of those grasses right up and over the cobblestones there. And then if you take a damp brush and you pull underneath, that gives, that grounds your, grounds your grass a little bit better too. And I usually will pull, put some green in there or I'll take some sepia and add some, some dirt underneath those underneath those patches of grass. So now this is one of the flowers. It looks like grass and it has the flowers on the top. I believe this is from the um, the wagon, the little wagon set. So I'm using some magenta and some olive green and there are flowers that go on towards the left and there are flowers that go towards the right. And I'm just stamping them a few times on the left of the door and then I'll ink I'll pull the color out of the lines there I am adding a little bit of the sepia to to underneath the grasses now I've inked up the same colors with the other side so the ones that go towards the right and now I'm going to go in and pull all that magenta out of those flowers. I am going to add some water as well to the to the stems, the grass there or just to give it a little more depth. I'm not using a lot of water here cuz I really want that definition to stay. But I think this at least made it look a little more full. Now I'm coming in here and I'm adding some of that steel blue to the door frame. And I'm doing this because I want to put some foliage around the door. So I definitely want to make sure I get this in before I do that. I should have done this before I put the flowers in, but I didn't. So now I'm just adding some sepia to the inside of the door and making some making some shot putting in some shadows. And I'm just going to continue to go around those windows and really. Oh, and I dropped, dropped my paintbrush. So now I'm going to work on that little door handle. Again, I'm going to I'm going to add some of that slate blue to the door handle as well, or to the little not to the door handle itself, but where the lock is. And I'm not coloring it in completely. You want to leave white space. I'm going to add a little more sepia to the, the little mat in front of the door. Maybe it's a cement pad. I don't really know what. And then to the grass is underneath. Now this is something that is a, definitely a preference. I tend to get as you, if you've watched my videos, you know, I tend to get a little more detailed and kind of a little overboard. You don't have to do all of that. You can do as much or as little as you want. Now, this is one of the vines from the new foliage set. And I'm just stamping that in so that it's around the door. So that it kind of looks like it's climbing up that, that brick on each side. And there's also a left and right of this one as well. So you'll see me use both either one. And I'm just I'm just stamping it three or four times, just like we do for our other foliage around that door. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm just softening up these little leaves. And 
and then we're just going to continue to soften out those leaves got a nice variation in the darks and the lights now I'm using the the opposite one and I'm not inking the whole thing up just the top of it And now I'm just adding a few more. See now that we've put some of the grass or this foliage in that kind of takes away from the washed out look of the brick on the on the right hand side. And then I'll just continue to soften out those leaves. This is in real time. I did not speed it up, which I, I'm not sure if you prefer it sped up or if you like it in real time. I try to do the longer videos. I try to speed up so that they're not so long. And now I just added a little magenta to my palette and I'm just adding those those flowers just looked a little washed out to me so I just wanted to add a little more color to them make them pop out a little bit better so I am grabbing another one of the flowers this is one of the original flowers and it made me think of violets or the purple vi yeah purple lilacs I guess that's what they're called so I wanted to put a few in here around the door so I'm just stamping it two or three times into the leaves. And then I'll stamp it along the top as well. I'm going to come in here with some more foliage and kind of cover those up as so they're not just laying out there on their own. And now I'm just going to add some water and pull the color out of the lines, jumping my brush left and right to try to keep the shape of the of the flower. Like I said, I really wanted it to look like lilacs. I was very happy with these. I think I had I don't know if I've ever used this stamp this way before and I think I'm gonna end up using it more now that I I like the way this looks. Now I'm using the vine from the original foliage set. And I'm just going to put it a few times on, on the top of this door. And I'm just jumping, jumping the stamp around to get, get some different colors in there. I'm very, I, I'm very um, versed with this one, this stamp. So I'm very comfortable with it because I, I use it a lot. So I'm hoping that that's why I've been using the other stamps more and more and more because I want to get just as comfortable with them that I, as I am with this vine. And it just comes with time, just comes with practice. That's about it. So I'm just going to come in here once again with my sepia and just add a little bit of more, a little bit more shadows, a little bit more color. And then I'm taking my slate blue and I'm just going on that inside door and adding a little bit more color. And I'll go over it a few times because I really wanted it to be a lot darker than that outside part. But I'm not coloring it in completely. I'm still leaving some shadows and some highlights. Here's I had a little too much so I just tried to just pull it back just a little bit with using a dry brush. And 
Then I thought I needed a little bit more something. So I just put some violet down and I thought I would add a little bit of color to to those curtains just so that I gave it a little, I was just looking for a little more color. So I added it just to where those parts would be gathered and then I'm using my my sepia marker and I'm just darkening in some of some of those areas where I thought would be the darkest. Now I'm taking a little bit more of that slate blue and I'm just bringing it around the top of the door where the flowers were are and then softening out some of those bricks on the sides. And actually this kind of made them look more look more alike on the left and the right. And then I'm just going to sign and date it. And that's it for our project for today. I hope you enjoyed our project and I hope you'll give it a try. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I appreciate all my subscribers and I've linked a couple more videos in case you want to take a look. Thank you so much and have a great day.